What does that poll that we're not talking about anymore mean? We're joined by our mate from the Demo uh, Democracy Project, Bryce Edwards. Bryce, how are you, mate? Not so bad. Lots happening in politics. So, there yeah, is sure. At the You're a lot better than Sam Uffendall, who I think might rightly feel in high dudgeon about the way he's been treated. Well, that's the breaks. That's what you, when you're a politician, you do have to put up with this. You have to be scrutinised. Uh, increasingly, there's a public mood, I think, that does care about integrity in politics. And they want um, parties to make sure they get uh, people of high hey, integrity. Hey, thumping that's someone at, at secondary school has got nothing to do with integrity in politics, Bryce. Yes, I think it is something that uh, a lot of voters, at least, would expect to be, uh, you know, if you were expelled from a school, you'd expect that to be something you'd admit uh, when you're on the, the campaign trail, uh, letting voters know that you, yeah, were involved in something as serious as an assault. So how far do we go? Parking tickets? Oh, look, this is the Picking question. Picking your nose? Masturbating? <laughs> look, um, I... <laughs> It's, 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 it's for the public to decide on this, I think, in the end. And, um, you know, it is a slippery slope, you're right, and we need a conversation about um, where do we draw the line. But, um, you know, in the end, it's transparency. And I, I, I think being expelled from a school, if, you've, uh, if you're admitting that to your party and you say it's important enough that they know about that, then it's probably important enough to tell your uh, your constituency. So uh, it's the transparency, it's the cover-up here. Okay. I think what about the flat, mate? Oh, look, um, this is what happens in scandals, isn't it? That um, they snowball, um, one person you know, puts out something that is damaging to a politician, others then climb on board, they might have uh, you know, a legitimate uh, grievance or, or not from the past, and they'll, this is like a green light. And so often we do see this with scandals. It opens the flood doors to, to other things um, and other parties, of course. So I think the really dangerous, well, I don't know that dangerous thing, but something that might happen now is that uh, we see people talking about the bullying of other MPs in Parliament. And so that's why I think Labour, the Greens, or all the political parties are going to have to be uh, ve tread very carefully on this because you'll soon see um, people remembering about what Trevor Mallard might have done when he was at school. <laughs> or, well, um, he Trevor Mallard to the greatest bully in New Zealand politics. He well, falsely accused uh, a man of rape, which cost the taxpayer hundreds of thousands look, of dollars, and he's still the Speaker yeah. of Parliament. Look, this is true, and there might be... I think that's a legitimate question to ask. I mean, maybe maybe Sam Uffendale is perfectly qualified to be in Parliament now due to his background as a bully, because it is a bullying place, let's be real. And, um, you know, um, to, uh, I think people do want that cleaned up a bit, but, mm. you know... Um, Uffendale's not the only one. And, yeah. uh, well, well we we do, you don't even know if he is the one yet. The other thing that Luxon has done, uh, you get this secondary complaint about being a bad flatmate, basically. The guy is suspended from caucus and they launch a QC's inquiry. If I was Sam Uffendale, I would feel thrown under the bus. And I think in terms of being a leader, Luxon has failed miserably to stand by his people. It looks to me you know, like, I, like he's afraid I, of the swinging female I, vote and he's and he sacrificed no, Uffendall no. on the pyre of political correctness. No, I think you're wrong on this one, Sean. Um, Luxon's in a very difficult situation and he wasn't informed that there was more to this than... Well, there wasn't the more to this. Sport. Who knows there is any more to well, this? There's a disgruntled flatmate who presumably votes Labour and hates men from 20 years ago. I don't think... No, I don't think any of that's true, Sean. Well, you uh, don't we know what's true <laughs> because the person's anonymous and there's been no good journalism around this, Bryce. Well, I'm not sure what the RNZ journalists have done to verify this story, but um, we, we do have some facts in the matter that there was... He went uh, to university uh, and he went flatting. He went flatting, yep. And the dad and was upset about whatever his daughter had told him. Yep, and the, the, the father did come the next day after this altercation. And that never happens. That's, that's never happened before. That's such an unusual experience for a, a varsity flat not to work out for a man or for a woman. 
Oh, look, I, I think it does sound extraordinary that she had climbed through a window and the next well, day... Well, we don't know. She says she did, didn't she? Well, but she's sure, anonymous, sure. so we can't uh, cross-examine her on that. Yeah, and, and you're right in the sense that um, this investigation will be the arbiter of this. Yeah. I think we can have some faith that this, you know, we'll find hey, out. Hey, Bryce, why don't, we have a li- why don't we have a listen to what this anonymous former flatmate said on RNZ. Just listen to this. Bullying, verbal, emotional bullying um, to myself to the point where it all kind of um, culminated one one evening where I was locked in my bedroom because I feared for my safety um, and he was smashing my, on my door and yelling obscenities um, and, you know, basically um, telling me to, to get out and hit, hit the road fatty and um, swearing and uh, I ended up climbing out of my bedroom win- window and ran to a friend's house to stay the night because I, I feared for my safety. I was, I was scared. I don't know. I would have called the police, I guess. Um, but Maybe. Bryce, I'm sorry, well, that... that is that it? I, I, I guess it, it comes into the field of public opinion, doesn't it, in the end, and we'll make our own judgment. Mm. But certainly, if the voters of Tyrone had heard that, I think there would have been a few... Oh, yes, but they could have heard anything. I mean, you could hear stories about yourself like yeah. that, Bryce, and I could hear stories oh, look, about me. Look, 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 this is true, and I think we are moving into, you know, an area where... Uh, uh, we're going to have to deal with a lot of scandals in politics that wouldn't have come up in uh, previous decades. And, um, you know, we're expecting our politicians to be of a higher standard than we used to expect them. And, yeah, that's going to be really challenging because some of it will just be um, hearsay, some of it will just be about um, bad behaviour. And if that disqualifies all of the, you know, all these MPs that have had uh, run-ins, then, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. This is a problem for, uh, for our politics yeah. because, you know, yeah. there'll be a... There'll be a few MPs that haven't had some major runners. Haven't had lives. Um, Bryce, back to that poll, which is, of course, and I would note this story was available to Christy Johnson from Stuff the day after the Tauranga by-election, but she held it until the day after a poll comes out damaging to Labor. That poll, to me, confirms that the tide is going out on the incumbent government. Yeah, that, that's really interesting about when the stories come out. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, I would have thought a more damaging time would have been on the Friday before the conference. But uh, but you're right, it, it certainly does um, have a bad impact on that success. I mean, it was a really successful conference, in my view, for National. And it finally did show that Luxon was drawing a line under all this you know, previous toxicity. And then you had a great poll out. I mean... I, about that poll, I think we should always be careful about reading too much from a poll because, you know, we saw... Yeah, Labor but in go context, down people, it shows the national. trend, doesn't it? Oh, it does. That's the important thing. And it does reconfirm that National and Act are way ahead of Labor and the Greens and maybe um, the Murray Party. So, um, yeah, it puts National in a great spot. And so it was great news for them. We're still a year away from an election at least. But um, it does show that Labor's in huge trouble. So um, the scandal certainly helps Labor getting their bad uh, you know, stories off the front page. Um, you know, I have been watching how people react online, especially you know, on the, the Twitterati, and they are panicking about this poll. Um, lots of them are saying, please don't panic, but they do, Labor actually do need to perhaps not panic, but really address their leader is dropped so far in the preferred Prime Minister's stakes. Why national? Does there come a point, Sorry, yeah, right, why Bryce, down? Does there come a point where you say we need to change the leader out? And does there come a point for Jacinda Ardern says we're not, gonna, we're not going to win and I don't want to be here? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I, I think that's absolutely the case. And I think there's, a, there's a, every chance that um, she will step down before the election. Um, she's on the downward... You know, slope. Um, I think the better time to have left would have been maybe a year ago uh, when she was still at her peak and seen you know, Labour into this triumphant situation. But, you know, who replaces her? And 
I mean, she still is the most popular, you know, politician in Parliament. Yeah. So let's not totally go overboard on this. But um, oh, the wait till the flatmates start and, coming out of the woodwork saying what she was like as a flatmate, leaving leaving the yeah, toilet seat and, up and stuff like that, Bryce. <laughs> Look, I know you're joking, but it's it, it is true that um, politicians private lives or past private lives is clearly now um, open, open for season. Open for yeah, that's right. Bryce, open thank, season, absolutely. Thanks for your time, mate. That is Bryce Edwards from the Democracy Project. Uh, you can read uh, he and his colleagues' excellent columns, of course, on the platform. And you can download the platform app at Google Play and the App Store.